C could I ask one final question? It's on chapter 13, and then I'll, I've taken up enough of your time. How false religion misrepresents God? Okay, one, one second. Um, find the correct chapter. There's a picture on page 56 and 57 that's rather harsh. On 57... Okay, so let, let me just find that, because I'm not quite there yet. Um, yeah. Well, so I'm just talking so about the picture. Which, which section? Please remind me which section you're it's it's section two, it's lesson yeah. thirteen, it's page uh, fifty six. Okay. There's a picture. Okay. There's a picture of a black preacher on page fifty seven with a machine gun in one hand and a Bible in the other. Uh -huh. There's a white preacher with a beard. There's a soldier kneeling before him and he's blessing the soldier. He's got a hand on his the soldier's head. He's wearing a white stole and he's got a ginger beard. I I'll have the picture in front of me. Yeah. There's a crusader knight at the top of the page on a white horse yeah. in armour with a, a lance with a crusader flag on it. The general tenor is rather critical of organised religion. Now, don't get me wrong, I think a lot of your criticisms are valid because there is uh -huh. tremendous hypocrisy in, in organised religion. But you're pointing the finger at the other religious groups and you're, you're criticising them for in, their involvement in warfare. Yes. Um, Point five on page fifty six at the bottom. False religion does not reflect God's love. Can you see it? Yes. Religions have misrepresented God in many ways. One notorious way has been their involvement in war. To see one example, play the video, then discuss the questions that follow. What position did many churches take during World War Two? Question two How do you feel about the position that they took? This book and this chapter, the general tenor is that the churches are hypocrites. And I would agree there's a lot of hypocrisy in organised religion. But Jehovah's Witnesses are whiter than white. You, you've had no involvement at, in politics or warfare. I say no involvement. I would say our, our understanding of that has developed over, over time. And I would say at this point and in, in the recent future, Jehovah's Witnesses have striven to take as neutral a, a stand as possible. In we certainly have never supported warfare um, in, in in the modern age. I, I don't know if you're referring to maybe around the First World War, the time between the First and Second World War, when probably our understanding of what it meant to be neutral wasn't as clear as it is today uh, and so um, you, you obviously have something in mind but as far as my understanding is and we, we don't involve ourselves in this world's politics in any sense um, to, there may be examples of what others might be questionable behavior but in, in relation to to political matters, to matters of war, we don't get involved. Um, I think it's a fair and reasonable um, statement. Well, I, I would certainly agree that people like yourself, who are um, ordinary elders at an ordinary kingdom hall, probably have no involvement in warfare. And I'm sure at your level, you have no involvement in politics. Um, but even the Watchtower magazine itself, all right? as well as the secular media, records numerous instances where the two Watchtower corporations, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York and the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania, have been involved in politics and warfare constantly for a hundred years. When you say politics and warfare, do you mean in, for, in, the, in the context of lobbying or in the context of petitioning governments? I, I, well, I would have to give you individual examples. I'd have to keep it brief because I've got so many. Um, it says on the bottom of page 56, what position did many churches take during World War II? Yeah? yeah. Well, during World War II in Australia, not worldwide, only in Australia, according to the Watchtower for the 1st of June, 1947, which is page 173, People who went for Bethel service 
were during the Second World War, because this is written in 1947, two years after the Second World War finished. And it's, it's reviewing what happened in Australia. And during the Second World War in Australia, young men who went for Bethel service were sometimes sent to um, serve soldiers in canteens. It doesn't say military basis, but that would obviously be the context. And it has this shocking admission that young men were, quote, working in machine shops producing instruments of war. So Jehovah's Witnesses, who went for Bethel service, were sent to work on military bases in canteens, or they were working in machine shops producing instruments of war. That's a quote from the Watchtower. It doesn't mention the company in the Watchtower, but I found out that's the Taylorcraft Aircraft Corporation, which was owned by a very wealthy Jehovah's Witness called Mr. Taylor. And during the Second World War, they made military aircraft for the Australian Air Force. So there's an instance of Jehovah's Witnesses um, doing what the churches were doing and producing military, military equipment during the Second World War, albeit for Taylorcraft, which was owned by a wealthy Jehovah's Witness. So that that would be if that were to happen today. What do you think Jehovah's Witnesses would do with those individuals? Um, I'm just pointing out that during this the happened, your... this happened, uh, and certainly in line with our current thinking, that would have been absolutely wrong. I'm but but the, the same thing could be said of the same thing could be said of the Catholics and the Anglicans. The Catholics could say, look, what happened in the Second World War is old light. We've got new light today. We've got Pope Francis. He's a very, you know, he's changing all of Catholicism. What happened in the past doesn't matter. Je- no, Jehovah's I'm, Witnesses... I'm I'm, 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 I haven't said that. Yeah, but you've got to yeah. judge yourself by the same standard that you judge uh, these other religions. If you think these other religions are wrong for their involvement in World War II, and I've seen pictures in Watchtower magazines... Yeah of people being burnt alive at the stake by the Catholics and the Inquisition. Mm -hmm. And then there's the picture of Hitler signing the Concordat with, um, um, I I forget, I forget forget the name of the, there were two, two future, he he signed a Concordat in 1933, von, von Papen representing the Nazi state, signed a Concordat with the Vatican in 1933. I've seen that picture repeatedly in Watchtower literature. If you're going to bang on about the hypocrisy of these other groups and how they're involved in warfare, you need to be fair and honest. You need to say, well, look, why were we involved in warfare too? If we're going to criticise them for being involved in warfare during the Second World War, then they can criticise us. Because you must treat people, you must judge people by the same standard that you judge yourself. Absolutely. So if, if those things happen, as you say, um, you know, I've no re- real reason to doubt. I, I would, you know, in my sense, I think that that is wrong. All Jehovah's Witnesses today would believe that that was wrong. I, I don't think anybody would uh, would argue. And well, the our, situation today is a lot, lot worse than that. I think that it was was there. Uh, I mean, I I know. Personally, uh, some Jehovah's Witnesses who took a completely different stand in this country and were uh, imprisoned for their belief. Um, sadly, they've passed away now. But yeah. um, I knew a few who had been imprisoned during World War Two because they'd refused uh, to join up and refused to fight. Yes, and refused to war work in war-related uh, industries. So, it, our belief. Whether or not we're a perfect organisation, of course we're not a perfect organisation. We've got things wrong. We've got beliefs wrong at times. There's no question about that. Uh, and much of that has been admitted. I, I can't comment on this because I don't know. But I okay. Think what, well, I, what I would say is, yes, it is hypocritical to, to complain that you're not taking sides in the war, and then there are instances when when you are found out. Yeah. I've got no no problem and with what you say in a sense if what you say is true that there may be individual instances with wrong and wise behaviour within Jehovah's Witnesses absolutely and should that be um, better communicated and, and 
you know, at a later stage come down and say, yes, we were wrong about that. Yes, maybe that's maybe that's OK. Case. OK, well, thank you. Thank you. For, I mean, you, I've given you the reference. You can always check it up in your own time. Um, the Watchtower is involved in politics and warfare today. But before I go there, I'd like to mention, are you familiar with the Standfast movement? No, not particularly. Um, I believe it's briefly mentioned in the book, which I read ages ago, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, Proclaimers of God's Kingdom, okay. which is on, on the website. Um, in 1918, there was a break. A huge number of international Bible students, they weren't called Jehovah's Witnesses then, yeah. left on the west coast of America, about a, a th uh, about a third left. Um, these people, um, the Watchtower Society says, well, they were a pro, they were opposed to Judge Rutherford. They were sort of grumpy people who didn't like Judge Rutherford and they left because of that. That's not the full story. They were standfast against supporting the military in the First World War. In other words, they were pacifist and they believed that it was a sin, it was wrong to support the American military in the First World War. They were known as the Standfast Movement because they were standfast against the purchase of the Liberty Bond, the Liberty Loan. Do you know what those are? Yes, I understand what those are. Yeah, you, you, would, you could simply give money to the American government. Uh, no interest would be paid, and after the war, the American government would pay you, pay you the money back. In the Watchtower of the 15th of May, 1918, page 6257 of the green reprints right judge rutherford promoted the purchase of the liberty bond also known as the liberty loan he did that because of the publication of the finished mystery he knew he was going to go on trial for sedition and he did go on trial and he did go to prison so he wrote this article briefly in the watchtower um to promote the purchase of the Liberty Bond Liberty Loan, so at his trial he so could say, "Well, I." So pardon? So he wouldn't look so seditious. Exactly. Um, I mean, I, I, the 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 people of our association are not against the government or against the Liberty Loan. Our thought is that li Liberty Liberty Loan is not a religious question, but purely one pertaining to the affairs of the government, and that each person should be left to the free exercise of his individual conscience as to whether he will or will not purchase Liberty Bonds. Our views are very well expressed in a statement given to the public press some weeks ago as follows. The International Bible Students Association is not against the Liberty Loan. Many of its members have bought and hold Liberty Bonds. Watchtower, 15th of May, 1918. And that led, that, that, that publication in that Watchtower led to a huge number of Bible students leaving, um, which caused the Standfast movement. There is another incident at the time of which we have no record. So this is hearsay. I don't have any photographic proof. And I, you know, there's no, they wouldn't have movies at the time with sound, but they would have had, uh, there are no newsreels or, or pictures of this. Um, at the same time, roughly about this time, Judge Rutherford took part in a national day of prayer on a podium with Catholic priests and Protestant clergymen praying for victory in war. Rutherford was so desperate not to go to prison. But again, I can't give you any proof of that. It's okay. it's recorded in many books, well, though. I, I know those things. Let, let's take both of those things. I think we can agree that, um, according to Jehovah's Witnesses, certainly current understanding and possibly understanding not too far ahead of that, that, that is wrong. Well, I've got no, uh, you know, th there would be no, um, no question about if that behaviour, buying war bonds, effectively or if, if what you said was true about standing with others, that is, you know, against what we are pur purport to believe. Mm. Absolutely. Okay. There, th there are many books which record Rutherford praying with clergymen, including Catholic priests, for the National Day of Prayer in, a, in, 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 in America, okay. but there are I, no I'm photographs aware, that exist of that. of that. It surprises me even more than the war bonds. I can understand the war bonds, I can't excuse it. I can understand fear of man um, causing somebody to, to act inappropriately <coughs> and, you know, in a big way, cause others to act inappropriately as well uh, for, for his own protection, if that is the case. Yes. If that is the motivation. The, the understanding about 
about separating ourselves from other religious groups really uh, was uh, it was reasonably well understood, but it's certainly developed more since that point, where we, where Jehovah's Witnesses have developed a more distinct identity of their own, rather than just as a, a group of Bible students. Um, yeah. That that understanding, I thought, I think, is developed, but uh, again, not excusable in a sense. But many of the beliefs that we had at that time have changed significantly. Many of the understandings of scripture that we have mm. from that time have changed significantly. And our understanding of what's right and wrong in some cases has changed significantly. But at that time in Bethel they were celebrating birthdays and Christmas. You know, there would have been elders smoking outside at the back of the Kingdom Hall. You know, there's a lot of changes that have happened over that time. But it doesn't make what if if what you say is true, it doesn't make that right. That's really well. I think that unfortunately the changes have been very much for the worse. I think the situation today is far worse. And I don't mean, I'm not talking about elders like yourself, at the, at the level of an elder in a local kingdom hall. I'm, I'm talking about the actions of the Watchtower's Bible and Tract Society of New York and the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. Their actions are far, far worse today than they've ever been. Um, in that today they are so involved in politics and they're also involved in getting through various sources and i'd be here for hours if i went to all the different sources um getting money from arms companies that there was a big bbc news um and itv news article about 10 years ago it was the first article on the bbc news scandal catholics and protestants invest pension money in in arms companies now they didn't invest all of their pension money in arms companies only a small small portfolio of the whole pension investment but the bbc news exposed the fact that the catholic church had invested largely in um a whole, huge portfolio of shares and some of the shares were in various european arms companies especially italian arms companies and the Anglican Church had invested their money in a portfolio of shares of which included quite a few British arms companies. And they said, what total hip hypocrisy. These people claim to be Christians and yet they've invested their pension money in shares, including arms companies. Well, today, the Watchtower does exactly the same thing. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania is the sole beneficiary of the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust. This is an independent trust. It's not owned by anyone. Henrietta M. Raleigh was a woman who died in 1945. And if you're dead, you can't own anything. So her assets were liquidated in 1945, invested in shares. The sole beneficiary of all the share income after tax and after um, the Detroit bank charges to administer this fund. So after bank charges and after taxation, the sole beneficiary of the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. You can what? see this on the IRS tax records. And I think uh, the latest... I'm not what you said. Yeah. Um, so it's quite easy to check up. And the yearly um, submission to the IRS for tax reasons includes a breakdown of where they get all their share income from uh -huh. and i can't remember the names of all the companies again it's a standard investment portfolio but in, it includes investments in arms companies that make military equipment such as honeywell boeing and northrop grumman and about between half a million and three quarters of a million dollars per year are given by the henrietta and raleigh trust which again it's it's autonomous. It's self-owning. Nobody owns it. Henrietta uh, can't own it because she's dead. Question here. So, in relation to that, something like that, just because somebody is the beneficiary of uh, of something, it doesn't mean they have control over where that. No, they don't. They don't because, as I've said yeah. twice, Henrietta M. Raleigh is an autonomous. Yeah, it's a self-owning trust. trust. The Watchtower does not own it. So, so. The Watchtower does not own the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust. The Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust is autonomous. It's self-owning. But the sole beneficiary is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Are there any trust, current trustees? Or is it, is it just, is it 
which is purely administered by the bank. It's you... purely administered by the bank for a fee. Now, if the Watchtower Society was God's organisation, they would say, yeah. look, we, we are God's organisation. We've been appointed in the year 1919 as the sole organisation on earth to represent Jehovah God. And because we're so holy and so righteous, we're going to turn down this money. Henrietta and Riley Trust, give your money to somebody else. We won't accept a penny because we're God's organisation. No, every year since 1945, they have accepted the money. I, I can't tell you... But they have, but they have no control. They have no control over it, but they have the right to reject the money because they they are God's organisation and they would never get involved in the military. And no, they accept the money every year. This is far, far worse hypocrisy than the Anglicans or the Catholics. The Anglicans and the Catholics don't claim to be pacifist. They don't claim to be neutral in warfare and politics. The, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania does, but it accepts share dividends from arms companies, from the, Henry, Hen, from the Henrietta M. Riley Trust, and a man called James McCann, he formed an engine company called the Rancam Engine Corporation, which makes very small ceramic engines. Um, if you make an engine with ceramics in it, it can get very hot and it doesn't matter about the heat because the heat's not going to warp the steel because ceramics won't warp under I, high I, I temperature. Well, so I understand the benefits of a ceramic. Yeah. Right. These engines are used in drones. Now, I don't know if it's the next generation of drones. I'm not a military expert. Um, most drones are propeller driven, but... but um, the U.S. Navy took out a contract that they wanted um, with, um, uh, uh, and what happened is that James McCann gave over five million shares in the Ramcan Engine Corporation, which makes engines for military drones, wow. to the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. I don't know which. I don't know if it's the Pennsylvania or the New York Corporation. But he gave five million shares in the Rancam Engine Corporation to the Watchtower, and they accepted it. Now, again, why didn't they turn it down? Why didn't they say, Mr. James and Can, we are Jehovah's organization. We are neutral in warfare and politics. We won't accept these shares because we represent Jehovah God. No, they accepted the shares. It's a level of hypocrisy far worse than you'll see in the Catholics or the Anglicans. As I said, it's not something I'm prepared to comment on. Right. I'm, I'm not familiar with the facts of that, and uh, what you say may well be true, and those questions can be asked. And but I don't have, in, in relation to the first trust, um, I think it's it would be fair to to say that. Jehovah's have no control over where that money is directed. They, they have, have the, they have control to reject the money. Yes. My point being, they, they have no control over where that money is invested. That is probably um, the, the bank will have legislation which directs how that, um, or internal policies, or whatever. This will direct how it, it administers that trust. If you are getting between half a million and three quarters of a million income yes. every year, you're going to damn well know where that money comes from because you're going to have to, you're going to invest it. The Watchtower has huge flaws at its at its um, New York I, I, headquarters, I know, full of full of lawyers and and accountants, because you know that the Watchtower yeah. trains a lot of people in law. And yeah, so they know full well wh where the money comes from. I've got I've got Henrietta M. Riley tax receipts going back almost 15 years from about just after 2000 to 2016. I can't tell you whether, you know, about the Henrietta M. Riley investments in, in 1946 or 1947. I don't have those records. But, but, but going back 15 years, they have consistently derived income from arms companies. And, and about 15 years ago, they were deriving 
money from Morris, the tobacco company. <laughs> so Jehovah's Witnesses claim to be against smoking, but you're getting you're getting money from Morris, the tobacco company. Right. So let, let me agree with you. The, I would say that Jehovah's Witnesses. What is the money used for? They, they uh, we we use our money for the assistance of our brothers for the for the furtherance of, of our preaching campaigns. No no individuals that I'm aware of, but which on the basis of of the money that uh, is donated. Um, there may be instances where it's questionable where that money comes from. I don't doubt that. Every large corporation probably has a few skeletons in its closet. Can you point to an organisation that does far better than we do? Well, I think about any any Christian church. <laughs> um, but the... the... In terms of neutrality and, and appreciating scripture, you say any, any yeah. Christian... Yeah, yeah, because at least they're honest, yeah? And and you don't have groups like the Quakers receiving money from arms companies. I, I can't think of any scandal where the Quakers, um, uh, the Mennonites, the Amish, I can't think of those three groups I, ever I having any I, income I, I from arms companies it, it it it's the fact that this is done surreptitiously yeah. it's done dishonestly that's what's so egregious about yeah. this have, you you claim you to be pacifist been, so, but you're so you're I, not as you be aware uh, and yeah. as you've correctly pointed out that i'm an elder in a local congregation yeah um and as you uh, uh undoubtedly aware is that i'm not um I have no links with those departments at Bethel or World Headquarters who who deal with such things. Okay? I have no personal knowledge of that. Um, from I, I know the organisation that I belong to isn't perfect. I absolutely accept that. And I accept that, you know, the more that you know about a particular organization, the more you, you can you can pick faults. I was in Bethel for eight years in the 90s. Mm -hmm. yep. I, I saw things that were, were not right. There's no, no question about that. So I know, you know, and I've seen uh, the way that we explain teachings and the way that we understand certain things change, you know, dramatically in the time that I've been one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, the, what then, you know, if, if I'm happy to be in an imperfect organisation, why would that be from, from my point of view? I could ask myself that question. You know, for, for those, for those religions that you know, do get involved in wars and do get involved directly in blessing troops, regardless of what, whether they accept money or don't accept money, you know. Personally, I can't think about being a member of an organisation where, you know, uh, the believers in one country are, are fought against by believers in another. So that, that, that discounts a significant part of the, the religious... I, I'm, I'm not interested. I, please, please, I, I, I gave up attending church in 2010. I'm, yeah. I'm just not interested. Could I go on to a, another topic, which is politics? Um, in a book called Revelation, It's Grand Climax at Hand, you yeah. criticise the United Nations for being one of the satanic beasts of the book of Revelation. Yeah. 